Guys, Kamaru Usman just got robbed in the main event of UFC 286, and I'm here to tell you all of it. No, I'm just kidding. Great fight. Okay, amazing performance from Leon Edwards. Uh, prove me wrong. Prove me and all the doubters wrong. I know I had a lot of people agreeing with me on my pick. I thought I couldn't lose, dude. I thought I had the Guru curse. I thought I had the Tracy curse, but I didn't, bruh. All right, I cursed it, bruh. So, respects. Good good performance from Leon. Um, Usman also just didn't look good. I feel like he just imitated his, himself. There was no confidence. There was no pulling the trigger. There was no real effort in what he was doing. He was just kind of going through the motions, and Leon looked really good. Leon just had an answer for everything. Um, so, Leon's the better fighter. Great performance. I'm very excited to see him as the champion of the division going forward. And, uh, yeah, get Covington, Marty. Um but today I'm going to go through every fight I want to see after UFC 286. I said, I said that like MMA Joey, but I'm going to go through every fight I want to see after UFC 286 and kind of give my thoughts on the card. So the first fight I really cared about was uh, Jack Shaw versus Makwan Amiakani. Jack Shaw got a great submission win there. Makwan Amiakani slowed down as per usual. So Jack Shaw needs to step up, bro. He's not he's not down there with those guys, with the Darren Elkins and the Makwan Amiakani's and the, you know, the Sung Woo Choi's of the division. I think he needs to step up, and I would love to see him take on David Onama, okay, David Onama, very exciting young guy as well, I think he was undefeated before he lost his last fight, Jack Shaw's had a similar trajectory lately, so he's bounced back, and I think he needs a big step up at featherweight, and I think Onama would be a fun fight, a dangerous fight, but similar in some ways to Amir Khani in terms of the gas tank, um, but more power, more danger, and a more, uh, you know, a, a valuable step up for him before he gets to the ranked opponent, so I think this would be a really exciting fight, and I think this would be really cool to see uh, maybe later in the year, September UK card, maybe Abu Dhabi card, uh, something like that I think would be really cool, so I reckon this is the fight to make. Uh, moving on, Marvin Vittori whooped up on Roman Delidze, dude. I love watching fighters who just have no actual skills lose, finally. Um, you know, like Roman Delidze, he's a good grappler, his striking is terrible, Marvin Vittori should beat him, and he did, quite soundly. Roman Delidze landed like five punches. So, great performance from Marvin Vittori. He learned how to kick. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I'm going to say this. I'm happy for Marvin Vittori. <laughs> I like Marvin Vittori now, dude. Um, Roman needs a step down, bro. So, I think I'm going to give him a step down. Still a ranked opponent because he is on a good streak before he lost to Marvin. And he definitely belongs in that top 15 at middleweight, you know. Like I said, it's the battle of who's less shit at middleweight. So, I think he needs to take on the loser of Chris Curtis versus Calvin Gaslam. Or maybe the winner... I think he should take on uh, Kelvin Gastelum next. I think that's a that's a probably a better fight for him. He's probably going to have a power advantage. His grappling is probably more likely to come into play. And for Gastelum, it's probably a safe a safer matchup compared to some of the other guys he could fight at middleweight right now, especially on the come up. Uh, you don't want to be the guy that gets Bo Nickel next or you know the goat Jamie Pickett next. So I think Delidze versus Gastelum next, uh, regardless of what happens in Gastelum's next fight. I think that'd be a really cool fight, and they're on very similar timetables, so this could make sense for the, for an end of the year type thing, um, you know, maybe a fight night co-main event or something like that. So I think Delidze versus Gastelum is a good fight to do next. Um, moving on, Marvin Vittori. I already said who he should fight, and now it makes perfect sense. Marvin Vittori needs another fighter before he moves up the rankings or he fights up the rankings. I don't think he's in in title picture. Uh, I know he I, he said something about Alex Pereira. I think I wasn't really listening. I got to be honest. Um, but I don't think he's in title contention. I think Robert Whitaker's next up. And, yeah, so I think either he fights Jared Cannonier, which everyone is saying, but I really don't care, bro. Like, Cannonier is just so fucking boring. I think Cannonier should fight... I don't fucking care. I really don't care about Cannonier, bro. I've got to be honest. He's not exciting whatsoever. I think he should fight Paulo Costa or maybe fight fucking... I don't know. I just don't care about Kenny bro. I would love to see Marvin Vittori fight someone else who deserves a title elimination bout, and that would be Drickus Duplessis. I think this is a way more exciting fight. Uh, Drickus Duplessis is a finisher. He comes forward with reckless abandon. He's going to try and get the fight to the ground. He also has way more power, way more striking than a Roman Delizze, but he's still of that shit caliber where I feel like Vittori could give him a good fight. I think this would be a really cool fight. Maybe a fight night main event. Um... Or, you know, a co-main event on a fight, on a big fight night, or, you know, the opening bout of a pay-per-view, or maybe a feature fight of a pay-per-view. I think Vittori versus Duplessis is a big fight at middleweight, and I think this is the probably the most compelling matchup you can get for Vittori. I think Cannoneer is boring. Um, I don't care about him versus Vittori whatsoever. I think Duplessis is way more exciting to take on Vittori, so 
Um, maybe the winner of this can fight Cannoneer, or, you know, Cannoneer can fight maybe a loser of a Pereira Adesanya or something like that. I don't really care. Um, yeah, I think this is a way more exciting matchup. So I want to see Vittori versus Duplessis next. And everyone else, this is how you know I'm like the best matchmaker on YouTube, because everyone else is going to make the most obvious choice. Oh, yeah, we should do Vittori versus, Dupl uh, Vittori versus Cannoneer, bro. Everyone fucking knows that already. I want to see Vittori versus Duplessis. That's a better fight. More likely to happen. Moving on, okay. Um, Casey O'Neill lost. Hold that L, bozo. Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't care. Casey O'Neill should fight like Montana De La Rosa or something like that, I reckon. At women's flyweight, I really don't. Or maybe like Macy Barber. I really don't care. Uh, Brian Barberina lost in round one to Gunnar Nelson. Great performance for Gunnar Nelson. We all kind of knew it was going to happen. I think Brian Barberina should take on a guy on the come up. And I think he should take on proper Mike Malot. I misspelled his name. I apologize. But I think that'd be a really exciting matchup, fan-friendly matchup. This could be a featured fight on a, on a fight night card or, you know, a, a highlighted kind of bout on a prelims for a pay-per-view. I think Barbarina versus Mike Malot is a really exciting fight that I'd love to see in the welterweight division. And I guarantee you, again, I'm the best matchmaker on YouTube. Nobody else is making this fight. I think this is a really exciting fight. This makes a lot of sense. And, you know, it's a lot more fan-friendly than Barbarina's last couple matchups. So, let's you either put over this guy that we're trying to push or you get a good matchup. You KO this guy. You're on the way back up, okay? I think this makes more sense. As for Gunnar Nelson, I'd love to see him take on someone who kind of mentioned this fight, was interested in this fight, probably got the outcome he thought he would see, and he was calling out Barbarina. I don't care about him versus Barbarina. I want to see him fight Gunnar Nelson, actually. I think that's a way more interesting fight. There's a better storyline to be had there. I want to see Ian Gary versus Gunnar Nelson at UFC 288, maybe UFC 289 in Canada, something like that. I think that needs to happen sooner rather than later. Maybe International Fight Week, I could see the UFC doing that. I think Ian Gary versus Gunnar Nelson is a way more compelling matchup. You've got the Conor McGregor Jr. storyline there with Gunnar Nelson being a teammate of McGregor. Um, you know, he, he poses an interesting threat on the ground. We might get to see Ian Gary's defensive grappling capabilities. I think this is a way more exciting fight than Gary versus Barbarino or Gary versus fucking who, bro. Like, I don't like this. Like, yeah, I think this is the way better fight. Ian Gary versus Gunnar Nelson. Way more exciting fight. I want to see it, okay? Then, Justin Gaethje got it. I should have picked fucking Gaethje. I literally said he was going to humble Fiziev. I basically said everything that happened, and then I picked Fiziev for some reason. So, I feel like an idiot. I basically predicted this whole fight outcome. I said Gaethje was going to fuck him up in round three. He's going to humble him. And by the way, people saying that Fiziev won, you guys are the same ones that swear Volkanovski won against Islam on damage, but Fiziev looks like he got shot in the face point blank in Red Dead Redemption, and you guys are like trying to find any way that he won. I'm sorry, dude. Gaethje won. Um, but yeah, Gaethje looked good, bro. Fiziev looked good too. It was a really good fight. Um, but I think Fiziev, there's a matchup out there for him to get himself back up to the top. Uh, not a super low ranked guy. I'm not talking about Jalen Turner. Or Dan Hooker, these are just matchups that just really don't make sense, to be honest, for a guy like Fiziev, who's on a winning streak before this fight. Um, I think he needs to fight a guy who's coming off one win, who's looking for a top five opponent, who poses a good matchup for him that can prove he's ready to compete at the top of lightweight division. And I think Rafael Fiziev needs to fight Mateus Gamrot, because like I said, if he's trying to be the guy that's going to beat Islam, and he's you know, this and that, he needs to prove he can beat a volume grappler like Gamera, and he, that's a better matchup for him in terms of the striking. I don't think he's going to take much damage in this fight um, if he fights Gamera. If it's a five-round bout, he can prove his cardio is still there. He can work on that. He can. F he has plenty of time to find a finish against Gamera, who's quite chinny, quite bad on the feet. So I think this is a good matchup for both guys. This makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I think this should be a five-round main event uh, at some point later in the year. So that's the fight I think we need to see. I'm tired of these... These basic fucking, like, matchmaking that I see all over the gram and all over YouTube of just, like, oh, Fiziev should fight uh, Drew Doba, or Fiziev should fight Jalen Turner, or Fiziev should fight Dan Hooker. Like, no, bro. Gamera is a much more intriguing matchup for him, and it makes more sense for a guy that's trying to get to the title who's held by a grappler. So, as for Justin Gaethje, I do agree with the consensus on this. We need Poirier versus Gaethje too. Poirier is not going to fight Dariush. He's not going to fight Oliveira again. I, I, he probably will fight Oliveira again. But he ref he ducked Dariush. No one says anything. He ducked fucking who else, bro? He ducked fucking Fiziev, basically. No one gives a fuck. Gaethje just beat him. So I think Gaethje versus Poirier should happen. Um, maybe a five-round main event. Maybe a five-round co-main event on a pay-per-view. Uh, you can definitely put this on pretty much any pay-per-view. And it will be the people's main event. And... 
we all want to see this fight. I think this would be a much a, a much better fight than we probably think. I know we're all a bit fatigued of uh, Poirier and Gaethje, but I think this is a good matchup and makes a lot of sense ranking wise. And the winner is probably going to get a title shot, which makes me depressed. But who who cares? Main event, like I said, Leon Edwards performed very very well. Uh, I thought Usman was going to retire, but he didn't. So I think maybe Usman takes some time off and probably fights the the loser of maybe Shavkat versus Bilal, which seems to be in the works. I told the UFC to make that fight. They made that fight. Dana White, literally just hire me, bro. Stop trying to pretend like you don't watch my videos, dude. Literally, I said, Bilal versus Shavkat's the next fight to make. They all dealt with me. Doubt me now. Pound for pound. Headshot dead. Yeah, Bilal versus Shavkat. Colby's getting a title shot, dude. Colby's getting a fucking title shot. There's nothing we can do about it. I think Bilal deserves it more. I was talking to someone on Instagram today, bro. People saying Shavkat deserves the title shot. People saying fucking... Give the title shot to Chimaev. Chimaev's moving up to middleweight. That's one. Shavkat's last win was Jeff Neal and Neil Magny. We need to fucking calm down, all right? Colby Covington, I know his last win is Masvidal, but the UFC's going to do it. They're going to fucking do it. So I'm just accepting that that's going to happen instead of living in pretend world. But if we were living in pretend world, you know who does deserve it? Ah, oh, I can't think. If only there was a contender that had four top 10 wins and had the most top 10 wins out of anyone that's currently at the top of the division and has more ranked wins than Colby Covington and has the best resume out of anyone in the top five besides Usman and <laughs> was on a nine fight winning streak right now coming off a finish over an undefeated contender and definitely deserves it and has a storyline with Leon Edwards. Yeah, <laughs> I think Bilal deserves the title shot, dude. Sorry, I broke it. Bilal deserves the fucking title shot, bro. Like, if you actually think Shavkat deserves it over Bilal, you're just biased, bro. You just... You just find him more entertaining, and guess what? I find Shavkat more entertaining too, but does he deserve it? No, Bilal fucking deserves it. He deserves it more than Colby. He deserves it more than fucking Shavkat. He deserves it more than fucking anyone else in the division. Bilal should be fighting for the title, but he's not going to, and Colby Covington's going to get the title shot probably in August or September or something like that, and it's going to be a good fight. I'm excited about it. I don't really care that much, but obviously, do I agree with the idea? No, but is it going to happen? Probably. It's just like Stipe, you know? It has to be done. And it's probably going to be a Leon Edwards win, but I actually think Colby Covington has some better skills than Usman in some places. He could give Col he could give Leon some trouble, bro. I think he could le give Leon some trouble. So these are every fight I want to see after UFC 286. Let me know what you guys think down below. Um, I hope that I didn't cope in this video. I don't think I did. You know, I'd like to think that I'm quite a man of my word. I stick to my guns. You know, um, I can admit when I'm wrong. So. Respect to everybody that picked Leon. You got me this time. Otherwise, I feel like I did all right on this card with my predictions. And next week, I'm feeling confident. So I'll see you in the next video, boys. Have a good one. Goodbye.